Let's preview tonight's Spurs Hornets game. Wimby for DPOY. And are the Spurs turning the corner? You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, this is Hot Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope everybody's having a great end of the work week. TGIF, everybody. Enjoy it. Got the weekend right around the corner. But your Spurs are in action tonight uh, and so much more. You guys are there every day. We appreciate you subscribing to Locked On Spurs. Where we get your favorite podcast. Ken's 5 Plus app, YouTube, Spotify. The list goes on and on. Apple iTunes. Just go check us out. Subscribe. Hey, this episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. Use code locked on to get 20 bucks off your order. That's J A S E medical.com. As you can see on your screen right now, you know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be looking at tonight's Spurs Hornets game. Is Wimby or should Wimby really be a serious contender for the Defensive Player of the Year? And is the team turning the corner? So we're going to bring our guest later on the show, my colleague at Ken's Five. He is Casey Vieira. Heads up, though, for you all know, he is a dad now. So congratulations to him. So he only could record via audio because uh, let's just say he's in dad mode, if you know what I mean, sleepless nights. So uh, he couldn't be video, but so it will be an audio segment uh, coming up after this quick preview. So uh, enjoy that and more. Let's just say he has some strong opinions about Wimby and the DPOI. But your Spurs, yeah, they get things going tonight against the Hornets, the first meeting of the regular season. Let's look at tonight's matchup. Spurs 6-30. and 30. Hornets 8 and 27. The Spurs are coming off a road win versus the Pistons 130 to 108. Hey, the Spurs just recorded five turnovers in that game and 70 bench points. Wimby watch Victor Wembayama had his first NBA triple double, 16 points, 10 rebounds, and I'm sorry, 10 assists and 12 rebounds. So and at 15, Kelvin Johnson had 17. Trey Jones in a starting role again, three in a row, 11 points, five assists, and Devin Vassell had 16 points. So injury report, everybody's good to go. Uh, Barlow is questionable. Not why, because the G League. City Sissoko is out because of a sprained ankle, but he hasn't really been playing that much. So as of right now, everybody seems to be good to go. For those on uniform watch, the Spurs will be in their statement edition jerseys tonight at the Frost Center. All right, so what are we looking at? Well, let's look at the Hornets side of things, and then we'll go to the Spurs. So the Hornets. Yeah, they have a winning streak against the Spurs. Did you know that? I did not know that. They've won five straight games over your silver and black. So the Spurs have had some issues playing against the Hornets. So hopefully the Spurs can snap that losing streak versus Charlotte. So Charlotte does definitely has a little bit of momentum going into this game against San Antonio. Now, keep your eye out on uh, Terry Rozier and LaMelo Ball. Why? Well, as of January 11th, the Hornets are the only NBA team to have two players rank in the top 10 in the entire league in fourth quarter scoring. So if it gets a tight game and it's coming down that final period, keep an eye on Rozier and LaMelo Ball. Why? Terry Rozier averages about 8.3 points in the fourth and LaMelo Ball 8.8 .8 points. LaMelo Ball is ranked second in the fourth quarter period as of January 11. Rozier is ranked fifth in that category. So keep an eye on those two guys if it gets uh, down to crunch time in the fourth. Now, also watch the three-point line. The Hornets have been connecting on more three-point shots than their opposition the last two games. We know the Spurs have issues with this, uh, seeing that perimeter defense be a little suspect. So Spurs keep, and you as well, keep your eye on that three-point line from Charlotte. Now, on the Spurs side of things, they're getting it done, uh, first of all, defensively in the last few games. So in three straight games, they recorded more blocks in their oppositions. That bodes well. It helps to have a Wimby on board. But, hey, you, you know, in a season of rebuilding and development, if the Spurs are trending that way defensively, and the Spurs have their issues this year on the defensive end, this is a good sign. So they've been out blocking opposition in the last uh, three games. And I mentioned about those turnovers against Detroit, only just five. 
Well, the Spurs have recorded now four straight games with fewer turnovers than their opposition. Again, a good sign they're trending in the right direction, valuing the ball, minimizing second chance opportunities for the opposition. So Spurs are definitely trending in the right direction, and we're going to be discussing that coming up next with Casey Vieira with Ken's 5 San Antonio. Again, he's only audio only, but we're going to be discussing Wimby and the DPOY and if the Spurs have turned the corner. That's coming up next on Lockdown Spurs. But first, I want to talk to you about Jace Medical. Look, you got to get Jace Medical right now. Look, I know we come to sports to escape from the crazy realities of real life. But can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season over a decade. That is very scary. Now, I can't imagine feeling more helpless than if my parents were to get sick or my nieces and nephews. Oh, you know, just knowing that maybe there could be supply chain issues that keep me from life-saving medication that I need. So that's where Jace comes in. Thankfully, we're okay because of Jace Medical. Now, they have the Jace case. That's a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. Look, this stuff can happen to any of us. With JaceMedical.com, you can complete your physician encounter. It'll be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to prepare for it than right now, today. Go to jacemedical.com. Use offer code Locked On to get 20 bucks off your first order. Hey guys, this is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to a Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. It's morphin' time. And we are back right here on Locked On Spurs. Finally joined by, I know, I'm, Casey, I made everybody wait in the first segment. By Casey it. Vieira, Ken's 5 San Antonio. Uh, he is my colleague over there at the uh, the big old Ken's 5. He is the weekend sports anchor. Follow him on X at Casey underscore Vieira. And Casey, my yeah. goodness. How about them Spurs? Right. The worst team in the league by a million. All of a sudden, we're back, baby. We're back, baby. Yeah. Well, we're going to be asking uh, Casey his thoughts on whether or not the Spurs have turned the corner. But first, Wimby, Wimby, Wimby. Uh, Wimby keeps on doing it each game, game in and game out. Casey against Detroit recently dropped his first triple-double in the NBA, uh, doing it all. But we knew one thing was for certain, uh, whether or not his offense came later in this career, whatever. We knew it was going to be immediate defensive impact. And so far, that is panning out and then some. You know, Casey, we've been talking about is Wimby going to be making the all-star squad? Is Wimby going to get the Roy Rookie of the Year? But we're leaving out Defensive Player of the Year. Do you think at the end of the day, either he will win it or be in serious contention for that award? this year yep i I mean i think my tone of voice kind of answered that question (laughs) all right when we get back uh, (laughs) oh in this segment yeah uh no no chance no chance and okay no that doesn't that doesn't mean i don't think he's terrific at what he does and won't win Mm -hmm. one in the very if not the very near future the future Mm -hmm. my is how do you how do you justify giving it and and I'm not I'm not huge on the idea of record playing having like a stranglehold on on votes or or things like mm-hmm. that but the team entered this recording with five wins well I guess yeah. no the game's over no, so six. now yeah yeah six yeah six wins yeah the game's over so they now have six wins on the season. How do you validate selecting a guy to win defensive player of the year when the defense collectively presumably is going to finish as a bottom five in the league? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. want to put it in the conversation for an all defense? I think that's very attainable. Mm-hmm. And honestly, probably should be make an all defense team in that front court. But I don't think you can justify putting a, 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 a winner having a winner mm-hmm. on a team that's going to finish potentially with fewer than 20 wins up there 
I don't hmm. think there's any any true argument. I, I, yeah, I mean, he's probably going to be up there in block shots, if not lead the league in block shots. Might lead, might lead all big men with with steals. Mm-hmm. But I think when it comes to putting that next to other candidates, I think that that the fact that they're going to be sub twenty wins in all likelihood is just going to hold way too much, way too much weight for him to win it this year. Yeah. This, yeah. This year. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I hard, think he's hard for me. I, I think it's um for me it's a soft yes. You know, like he, I think he'll be in contention for it. Uh, he's currently, as of this recording, he's 11th in the NBA at rebounds at about 10 a game. That's over guys like a Jared Allen, a Nick Claxton, some of the better bigs, uh, defensive bigs in the league. And you look at what he did versus the Pistons, you, you know, double figure rebounding. I talk about the blocks, you know, he had, you know, a pair of five block outings versus Cleveland and the Bucks. Uh, you know, I think even just the, the the disruption that he causes in the paint for would be, you know, players going to the rim and just making them think twice. I think he's going to make a, a good case for it. Now, I think you're right. I think the record is going to impact him, not just on the DPOI, but Roy and maybe all-star squad. But I think his length, his size, his mobility is lending to a lot of these great defensive uh, stats. I think he's going to be in play, Casey. I'm not going to kick him out of the running. All right. Moving on. More to you then. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> more, more, more to you then. I, I just, I think, I think as of this recording, I think Rudy Gobert is the Vegas favorite at the moment. If right. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I have it here. Okay, so Rudy Gobert is the Vegas favorite. Minnesota has the best record in the Western Conference. There's probably at the end of the day, there's probably going to be comparable numbers between him and Victor in terms of rebounds, defensive rebounds, block shots. Victor's yeah. going to probably get steals. Defensive metrics, who knows, because there's a million and one metrics. Mm-hmm. Victor will be a conversation. But even if you have even if you have them neck and neck, what's mm-hmm. the deciding can can a voter truly validate a selecting Victor over a guy like Gobert mm-hmm. with a record that's gonna be bottom three in the league, a defense that's gonna be mm-hmm. bottom five in the league, compared mm-hmm. to anchor of the best team in the West, if not the league. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I think those individual metrics for him keeps him in the running. Ultimately, does right. he win it? Eh, iffy. But, you know, he leads the league as of this recording in blocks at 3.2 a game. Um, right. Steals, he gets about two a game. And this is a guy who's on a minutes restriction, mind you. So That's the crazy yeah. part. Is- yeah. Like that's why that that's why you know you just you, people see from the outside looking in and they see a, mm-hmm. a line that's not too aesthetically pleasing. Mm-hmm. They'll see a, they'll have like seven points. They're like, oh, you know, told you this dude's a fraud. And then they'll <laughs> see the flat, and then they'll see the flashy nights and be quiet. Like under, yeah, I mean, expectedly so, but very frequently they don't see the minutes part of that. And it only just emphasizes so much more right that this is no pun intended alien stuff out other mm-hmm. word other worldly stuff that is going on right now and it's yeah. obscene i mean i mean i think like i said before i i think the much stronger argument and as of right now you can make the case is the to make a an all defensive team because mm-hmm. how do you put how do you put the league leader in block shots and someone, those two steals, I don't know what, where does it rank right now among bigs? If you have oh, I, 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 no, I just went away from it, but um, okay. yeah, but so he's up know, there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, a few seconds. I'll, I'll pull it back up. Yeah. Block, right. Yeah. yeah. The league leader in block shots, league leaders and steals right up there in every defensive metric. I don't see how he doesn't have a real shot to, to be on one of those defensive teams, that's for sure. But the deep, yeah. but DP applied, not not a chance. Not a chance now. Uh, now, um, I mean, one thing we'll have to go into his favor. One, the Spurs. We'll talk about it in a bit. I mean, have some sort of significant 
turnaround in the in the few games. Well, you know, the rest of the NBA season, you know, and he just goes on some tear, you know, defensively, like fuck. Well, I'm making this up. Six games in a row with five blocks or more, or, or you know, and you know, holding such as that, helping the team, you know, limit such and such a team to X amount of points, well below their average. I mean, it'll have to be something crazy, but you know, it's just a shame that the record is going to impact him, you know, and not just again, DPOI, but I mean, other, other uh, awards, right. He's doing all he can do. You know, we mentioned the triple double. There is that viral video of him leaving the Cavs game, you know, screaming out an expletive because the Spurs lost. So, you know, he's doing everything he can, but ultimately, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough, as you mentioned, record plus Spurs defense collectively and where the team ranks and then there's Victor, which makes him why he's the cornerstone. He's doing all of this just on his own. Can you imagine when the team gets things really going and really bring mm-hmm. in a good roster and then start being one of those uh, you know, defensive teams that all Spurs fans know and remember? So how about this? Do you think it will happen sometime in his career? What? That he'll, that, yeah. that he'll win a defensive player of the year? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. what I think so. Yeah. If, not multi- if not multiple, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I don't see a world where you're going to have someone who comes in and can do what he does on that level, Chet Holmgren included, on the mm-hmm. defensive side of things, and not say anything other than he's has a real chance of winning it year in mm-hmm. year out maybe not next yeah. year maybe not the following year but the way things are going right now he has all the tools to be a contender with that every every year mm-hmm. yeah right now you know you're digging deeper to his individual defensive stats he averages about 2.8 deflections a game you know we mentioned the blocks so you know he's he's there you know i mean you look at even uh, charges. I mean, we've seen him take a charge, you know, at his height and, you know, how f- careful the Spurs are with his health and body, you know, he's out there trying to take charges. Uh, so you're looking at, uh, you know, a guy who is just 20 years old. He's already doing this defensively. Can you imagine once he gets two or three seasons under his belt, Casey? I mean, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's going to be a force um, uh, on on that end of the court. And, and again, again, I think we all knew that he was going to bring that uh, into the right. NBA, and that was going to be the most immediate impact. And we're seeing that there. But will he win that big award, DPOI, in his rookie season? Probably not. I just hope that he, when the final vote tally comes out, Casey, that it's not egregious where he doesn't get any type of you know, a good showing. I think he'll yeah. get a good showing vote wise. Yeah, I think some people are going to show him love on their ballots. Yeah, I think I think what was the more interesting hypothetical is what's the leeway that voters would give to consider mm-hmm. the record. Like if if if, if this team finished the year, it's not going to happen. But finish the year thirty and fifty two, or thirty. Yeah, yeah, the thirty. Yeah, so it'd be thirty and fifty two. Mm-hmm he be considered that still might even be stretching it a little bit. I think you probably have to be right around 500. Yeah. If, exactly. if, if, if the, if the other candidate is on the best team in the conference, yeah. I think you'd have, yeah. have to try 500, right? I don't think you could, I don't think you could pull off having a, a losing record if that would be yeah. the other. Candidate. Yeah. We shall see how the voting pans out, but coming up next, we're going to ask, as the Spurs turn the corner, does it look like they're starting to get going, starting to click? Sure, they got a couple of losses, but even those losses, there are signs that are making Spurs fans open their eyes like, maybe? We're going to discuss that coming up next on Locked on Spurs. This is Zach Aguilar, the voice of Tanjiro Kamado, and you're listening to Locked on Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Hey, I want to talk to you about Prize Picks, the daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest, most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You don't have to worry about battling other players, the pros, the sharks. It's just you. 
you alone. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and hopefully you can start watching those winnies roll in. Price Picks is so much fun. You can have so much fun on that app. It offers Apple Pay now, so you get quick, easy deposit into your account this basketball season. They have weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select players' projections up to 25% to provide even more value. The Price Picks app is simple to play. You can make your picks and submit those entries in less than 60 seconds. Go get that app right now. Start getting those wins. Go have some fun. The NBA season is well underway. So just add that to your watching uh, enjoyment by playing along with Prize Picks. So you want to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Locked on NBA. That's the code you want to use. And you want to go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And we are back on Locked On Spurs with Casey Vieira, the only man to ever stop Victor Wimbayama from getting a triple double until last night because Casey couldn't make the trip to Detroit. Good job, Casey. Right. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't have stopped you, it last night. That's for sure. <laughs> you got. You got that dad power now. You got that dad power, you know, that, that instinctual power to come out and just win at all costs now. So, by the way, how's the, how, how's the little I'm one doing? I was going to say, I'm wondering when the dad muscle comes through. I think the dad the dad bod probably comes first. But Oh, man, please tell me that's already settling in. Is that starting oh, to happen no. already? Oh, no. Not 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 yet. I've, I've, I've trained extra hard to make sure it doesn't <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoying enjoying it while I still can before I face the inevitable one day. But to answer right. your question, to answer your question very well, I'm currently, as of this recording, this is currently my shift, and he is uh, out cold right now, watching him on the baby monitor. So yeah, if, yeah. If, I, if I abruptly need to bounce and you hear a uh, child crying in the background, uh, you, you will know why. That's Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter That's Vieira. Mr. Carter. Hey, Mr. Carter. Dad. With that mm-hmm. being said, everybody, let's go ahead and kick this going so we can let Casey go and do his dad duties. So, uh, <laughs> Casey, you know, the Spurs you seemingly seem to be getting things. You're seeing them now winning the third period now. That's three, under, three games in a row where they're not getting curb stomped in that period. You're seeing mm-hmm. minimal turnovers, just five for the game versus Detroit. You're seeing Keldon kind of easing into his new role off the bench. You're seeing them only took how many games, Casey? Giving Wimby yeah. the full attention on that court. Yeah. And they're being competitive. You know, taking Milwaukee to the final seconds, taking the Cavs to the final seconds. Sure, okay, Detroit was shorthanded, no Cade, no Isaiah Stewart, but they hit, went in there and nevertheless handled business. Is this team turning the corner? Are you there already? Are you saying, you know what? I think they're getting it. I think it depends what, how big of a corner we're turning here and what your definition is of that. Because I don't think we're going to rattle off. I don't, I don't think we're going to see this team rattle off 20 wins in a row or, you know, mm-hmm. even five wins of, in a row. But in terms of schematically finding things, I think last time I was here, it was right when Kelvin got put on uh, or was uh, moved to the mm-hmm. bench. So, all right, you know, they might have found found something here. It was only two games in, and now that we got a larger sample size, it seems like that's working out. And Wemby at the five, that's working out. The idea of them turning the corner, at least from the standpoint of finding some sort of consistency, I definitely think it's a possibility. Mm-hmm. I de- I, at least you, you look at the schedule coming up, there's a whole lot of – Charlotte, there's a whole lot of uh, Washington, Chicago, yeah, Chicago, yeah, Chicago. That that's actually got that that game thrown in there. Actually, probably is not the worst thing in the world. And the timing of it, um, but there are a lot of winnable games in their next mm-hmm. in their next six or so. I know there's the there's the at the end of the month you got OKC and uh, Minnesota. I forget what days, but I know they're. They're coming mm-hmm. town or later. 
you hope that they get a little a little traction going given that there's a whole lot of time not spent in San Antonio in the month of February. Yep. So if you get any kind of situation this month where you pick up any sort of fluidity, you know, you take it and, mm-hmm. and you're fun with it. And right now I think they're trending in the right direction on that front is that they are finding sure. little things that, that work, at least consistency that work. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I said, and it's not, I don't think we're suddenly turning the corner and this team has truly found themselves or anything like that. But I think there are really for the first time all season and, and separating the, the Pistons result aside. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's like, like you said, I mean, the games are, they, the games are competitive right now. Milwaukee, Cleveland, you know, the other day, you saw them put up a good fight. Mm-hmm. And even the, the Portland game a couple of weeks ago, they were down by like 30 and they at least made mm-hmm. a respect for the quarter. So you're seeing positive things trend like that in the right direction. So in the context of them finding a little bit of consistency and players knowing their roles and getting a better idea of what's working for these guys and what's not. Yeah. I, I, I think they're turning the corner. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I think they're definitely gelling more. Uh, they're starting to cook a little more. You look at what Trey Jones had to say after the win versus Detroit. He says, quote, we... well, yeah, that's another thing, moving him yeah. into the starting line. Yeah. 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 And, that's, and, that, that's, and I talk about this on low so many times. It just baffles me that the stats were so in your face. Coaching staff, star Trey Jones. I'm like, nah, we good. We're going to go with Sohan. And then we're going to go with Malachi. Let's just leave Trey off to the side. Look, it right. took a Malachi injury for it to happen. It took, that's what happened. It took a Malachi random injury for them to go, fine, Trey Jones, you get the start. And lo and right. behold, they start winning the third period. They're playing a little bit more com- competitively. But, uh, you know, they go to the team, what they had to say about that. And Trey Jones said that after the game versus Detroit, he says, quote, we felt that recently that it's starting to click a little more. We had two really close games leading into this one, Detroit, that we felt like our hands and that were in our hands and we let them slip away. We felt we're playing better and better. We're gelling more. Hey, look, if the Spurs are feeling like that, I'm all for it. You keep on keeping those vibes. Good job, Spurs. Way to go. But uh, I, how about this? You know, I'm going to steal something from one of our previous guests, uh, Raul Flores of the AP Radio. How about this, Casey? Maybe they are turning the corner, but maybe they just have their blinker on. That's it. They have the blinker on and they see the corner coming. They just said, okay, let's turn our blinker on. Would you say they're there right now? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you sure. get what he's trying to say? He's saying, like, maybe they haven't turned the corner completely, but they see it coming and they turn uh, on the yeah. like, we're, we're on our way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think yeah. that's it. I, I think that's a, a good middle ground, good parallel. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, I definitely need to see this team and how they face against some of the uh, upper tier teams. Now that they're somewhat starting to click, they do have a soft January schedule. You know, we, they just come off the win, beating the Pistons. You know, they got the Hornets next in Chicago, but they got a Boston team that's up that's coming up soon. You mentioned the Thunder. They got a Dallas game. I really want to see how they play against those teams. Do you think that will be a better barometer of where this team is when they face those upper tier teams? I'm not saying they're going to go into Boston TD Garden and just smoke the Celtics, but if they're in it like they were against the Milwaukee, I'll take it. Mhm. Yeah, I, I I think so, and it's gonna it's gonna help if they can take care of the teams that they're supposed to beat on yeah. some of these days. Going into those games, like like there's a reasonable chance because the next four going into that Boston game, uh, next three, excuse me, is Charlotte mm-hmm. Bulls at home, Charlotte and the Bulls at home at Atlanta. There's no reason that they can't be heading in, into that Boston game, winners of three of four. So just riding a little bit mm-hmm. of confidence to go into that a little bit, feel good about yourself. Yeah, I, I, I think that helps a lot in the cause when you're facing a Celtics team, especially one that had the entire building bleeding green on New oh, Year's God. Eve. Oh, yeah, I was, I was there. Like, my I know goodness. you were there for that. You were ter- I know you were, you were sending me pictures and videos. I was like, oh, boy. That might have been yeah. the low point, honestly. That might have been the low point of the season. 
I think um, they're 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 definitely on the right driving lane. They're following all the proper directions. So, you know, okay, strap in your seatbelt. Let's let's go to get proper car signal. And I think they're there, so they're well on their way. Casey, we know you're on dad duty right now, so uh, we'll cut this short for you so you can go attend to Mr. Carter there. Um, but there's so many car puns that are left here. Okay, what you got? Give me, give me, give me one before we let you go. Oh, you I was going to say, like the bare minimum, at least like, you know, they turned on the actual vehicle, uh, you know, uh, before about six weeks, six, six weeks, no, not even six weeks ago, three weeks ago, they couldn't even turn on the damn car. Here's another so one. Turned for the car, we're actually on the street. Here's a drive in. By yeah. the way, it's yes, there was a time where we had to drive with a stick and shift gears. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to age myself right now. Uh, I think they finally got it into first giving the ball to number one, Wimby. Uh, so how about that one, Casey? Uh, there, you there you go. There you go. He is Casey Vieira, my colleague at Ken's Five San Antonio. Follow him on X at Casey underscore Vieira. We always appreciate his time. You know, he's on daddy duty, but, you know, he carves out a little time to join us here on Locked on Spurs. Uh, what's going on with Ken's five on the sports desk there? You know, Cowboy season, I take it, and Spurs, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so what's going on? I know this weekend, uh, Saturday game, the Bulls game is on Ken's five. That it so is. If, uh, if you, you feel like checking out your boy, turn the TV on. And we'll have you taken care of over there. Let's get mm -hmm. you ready for it. Seven o'clock tip. Yeah. I feel like seeing more coverage on the Cowboys. I know our pal Nathaniel, Nate Ryan, he's going to be there on Sunday. So if you are looking to um, celebrate the win more or celebrate another year of self loathing if the Cowboys lose, <laughs> I got your plans for Sunday right there. I mean, if they, lose, right. I, if they lose, like if they lose, I don't even want to. I wouldn't even want to turn on. Actually, no, I lied because I'm on Sunday nights too. So you want to watch the recap on Sunday nights too. Uh, I just want to do that. Hands yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, to entertaining. Right, and and then turn off the TV and you can loathe. But from like ten twenty five, at like about ten twenty five, and then maybe about ten fifty three or so, turn on Ken's five. Watch there you go. There I don't really care what happens with the rest of your night, but. Do that. Do exactly what Casey said, everybody. Make sure you uh, mm -hmm. check out the game. Spurs Bulls on Ken's Five, and uh, you know follow uh, Casey and the rest of the sports crew on the, your television set or your app or whatever you find the Ken's Five, and they'll get you covered for all things uh, Spurs, Cowboys, and more. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts: iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Ken's Five Plus app. Yeah, check this out. Lockdown Spurs has a 24-7 streaming sports channel on YouTube, Lockdown Spurs Today. Go check it out. It's with the national host, regional host, the local host like myself. So we're all there on the 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, Lockdown Sports Today. Go subscribe right now. So for Casey Vieira, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.